Okay, so we're talking about buckles and buckle assembly, and I think what's helpful when you're thinking about buckles is first to understand the anatomy of the assembly. So over here we have a diagram of what the buckle looks like. The outer section that captures the leather is called the frame. The bar is actually wrapped by the leather and allows the prong to pierce through. So you end up with two components, right? You have your frame, bar, and prong, and then you have this piece of leather that has a slot cut and anywhere between one and like four holes, depending on how you want to do the assembly. Um, oftentimes, uh, you'll see that there's just one rivet. Sometimes there'll be two. And depending on the style of the buckle, you may need to include a keeper, which is why we have a set of four. So what I'm going to show you now is a simple straight buckle, right? So we have our frame here, and this little piece, if it spins, is called a roller. And if it's not there, it's just a frame. This piece is the prong. That's what slides through the leather and goes through the holes to hold everything together. And then this secondary component is called the keeper. And what it will do is it will allow your leather strap when it goes through to lay flush on your material. So you always wanna make sure when you're designing it, you can fit it all with one rivet here. Or if you decide you would like a keeper located further down, you may use a uh, two to four rivets to trap that keeper. And alternatively, this is a center bar buckle, and that's because the bar is in the center of the frame, and that allows the center bar buckle backer to act as your keeper when you do your design. So depending on your assembly, um, you just need to know that you're gonna have a loop, you're gonna have a slot, the prong will pierce through the slot and be captured by the leather as it does so. So you end up snapping the rivets from top to bottom to lock it in place so that the prong pierces through the slot located here.